Hello everyone, welcome back to the football story. We just had an absolute fantastic weekend of Premier League football. Some good, some bad for some teams, but we're gonna go through all the games and let me know in the comments, how did your team do in the Premier League? So first up, we have my team Liverpool and Listen, it wasn't the, the best performance from Liverpool. There's obviously a lot to improve on. They didn't start the game well, which is what they're struggling to do at the minute. But there is a lot of positives to take. Obviously, we have a new look midfield. Things are starting to improve on that side. I think McAllister, Shabasoy, they'll start to get better. Salah, who for me, probably hasn't performed really well in all the other games, but he's getting goals. He's getting assists, but there's still a lot more to come from him. Nunes, Gakpo, Jota, they're all coming in. They're all making differences. And I think the one thing with Klopp is that he'll be happy that he has options now. I a lot of the time especially in midfield Liverpool have had to rely on say Henderson Fabinho even when they weren't playing well and that's been a problem because we haven't been able to adapt we haven't been able to change the one thing you would probably look at is defensively we're still not the best I was doing a live stream during the game and a lot of people were talking about how Liverpool need a centre-back even though Gerald Kwanzaa came in at centre-back and partner Matip Joe Gomez went out the right back and Neto who is not the biggest Premier League player in terms of ability he's okay don't get me wrong but he looked like prime Messi the way he was playing some of the football Liverpool were just giving him so much space and he was just running at Gomez and Gomez he's good when he wants to be but you'll get one good performance out of him a year and that was probably the one that against Villa but there's definitely a lot of improvements Liverpool are on the up Wolves on the other hand I think they started the game well they obviously set out with what they wanted to do similar to what they did against United they started with the high press they obviously got the early goal which a lot and then they were able to sit in but i think it kind of killed them in a way because once they got the early goal they wanted to sit back a little bit more so they weren't pressing as high um, and Liverpool were playing into their hands a lot with like say simple passes they were passing astray and and Wolves were capitalizing on it and did well in the first half but they kind of just ran out of steam in the second half so there's a lot to improve on for Liverpool and I think Wolves especially with Gary O'Neill he did a really good job at Bournemouth the last last season and I think they will stay up I think they have enough quality in that team to stay up uh, and some of the other teams around them are really struggling at the minute so um, overall a good win for Liverpool obviously coming back from another 1-0 defeat but they definitely need to show up defensively um, and they need to start games a lot better otherwise against the good teams like your Arsenal's like your Man City's they will struggle so let me know in your comments what did you make of the Liverpool game and how do you think they will do so far this season Manchester United against Brighton I think a lot of United fans were going into this game getting worried and they had every right to be Brighton are a really good team and I think based on what we've seen so far they're probably the fourth best team in the league I think City, Arsenal and Liverpool are just slightly ahead of the rest but in terms of the overall package the way they play football the players that they have coming through they're just a really really good team like they didn't have Estepinian, Ferguson and Joe Pedro none of them started for them and they've been kind of chipping in with a lot of goals obviously Ferguson getting a hat trick and Estepinian is arguably one of the best left backs in the league if not the best so for them to drop them players and still go to United and win 3-1 it shows a lot about where they're at so I would say they are the fourth best team in the league at the minute so they deserve a lot of praise I think a lot of people are talking about Manchester United and how they play poorly and they don't have this and they don't have that but Brighton are a team that will punish you no matter what Manchester United they started the game well they kind of pushed on they had a disallowed goal which was 100% it was the ball was out of play there was no arguing about that um, and Hoyland obviously was disappointed not to get his first goal for United but he looked good there was promising signs from Hoyland I think he will start to play better obviously gets as he gets sharper and more match fit but it's worrying for United it is they've now lost three of their first five Premier League games they're sitting 13th I think it is at the minute and they don't look like they're they're not going to stop conceding goals Anana for as good as he is playing out he isn't as good a shot stopper as De Gea maybe was and De Gea had a mistake in him but he was reliable in terms of like you knew what he was getting Bruno Fernandes looks like he's struggling Casemiro looks like he can't run Rashford who on his day is good but like against Brighton he was very wasteful with the opportunities he was getting and you know they have players they do have players but there's so much going on with the club like the Sancho situation the Anthony situation and Ericsson Hag seems to be struggling to manage it all it's going to be a difficult few weeks or a few months for Manchester United I don't think it's going to be the season that their fans wanted um, and they wanted to obviously push on from last season but the way things are going it doesn't look like they're going to be able to basically come back Gary Neville said it in his post-match um, podcast on Sky Sports you don't win anything in the first few seasons but you can lose something and I think Manchester United will probably have to lose now on say that title race or pushing and improving on what they did last season because I think for now if you were to say to a Manchester United fan would you take fourth they'd bite your hand off so 
yeah they obviously have Bayern Munich tomorrow which is got, not going to be an easy game and I think um the games are coming thick and fast so they can turn it around in terms of getting back to a better level but they're still going to continue to struggle in my eyes they just don't have the players that they need and yeah it's going to be a long season for Manchester United fans before I go on I just want to say if you're enjoying the content make sure to drop a like it really helps out with the algorithm and if you're not following make sure to drop me a subscribe uh but yeah let's go on to the next one West Ham against Man City. Man City are a joke. Like it's almost like you're fighting for second place at this rate. No matter who they're playing against, no matter what way they're playing, they're unbelievable in terms of just turning results on their head. West Ham, I watched I watched most of the game. West Ham did okay to get the goal, but Man City had missed so many chances up until that point. Like Doku, who's after coming in, looks like he's gonna be a really good player. Something very different to what Grealish offers. I think Grealish is used to be a player who went at um, defenders but he's kind of turned into more of a uh, someone who retains the ball and Doku looks like he still has that kind of fresh energy that sometimes Guardiola arguably takes out of players where he wants them to retain the ball fit the system and um, but Doku at the minute it just looks like he wants to go at everyone that you get every time he gets the ball it'd be interesting to see how he continues but yeah Haaland scores Bernardo Silva we know about the quality he has and it's just a routine win for Manchester City. Like they don't even look like they're playing in in first gear. And this is one thing that everyone gets worried about with Man City is they usually don't start the season well, but then coming to the end of the season, they start to pick up form. They get that 14, 15 games in a row. Like you remember last season when they played Spurs, they lost to Spurs. But this season, they've just went up another level. They, they look like because their squad is so strong, because they obviously have the confidence after winning the Champions League, it looks like the pressure is almost off them. And they have the bit between their teeth to a certain extent. There's still obviously room to improve and Guardiola probably won't be happy with the way they might be performing and sometimes, and especially when they come up against better opposition, because they've obviously had a, an easier start than maybe like some of the other teams. Like they played two promoted teams um, and I'd say West Ham was probably their biggest test so far this season. But they will be very happy with where they are. Five games five wins continuing before and on the West Ham side I thought West Ham did well they obviously knew what they were going to be playing up against um, they sat back they hit on the counter attack Bowen looked good again he set up Sue Fattel who crossed it in for James Ward Prowse overall like they've had a really good start to the season as well West Ham and going into like a game against Man City even though you're at home it's more or less like a free hit like if you lose nobody's too worried about it um, so they'll be they'll be doing fine and I think after winning the, the Conference League last year I think this season um, they're going to be in the Europa League but I think they'll still want to do okay in the Premier League and they've started well so I think they'll continue on that way for, for now Ball was under threat but did they pull that out of their arses come in and get two goals I think it was the 98 and 101st minute they scored in it was just crazy like going to the Spurs and playing the way they did and getting the goal they're obviously going to sit back and enjoy defend there was a lot of time wasting going on which Spurs weren't happy about Spurs for me they're playing some really good football and has them playing like really really well but the thing is is that say like in that instance in a game against Sheffield where Sun wasn't playing particularly well, Madison wasn't creating as much as he, as he usually was. And the thing is with Spurs is that when those two don't play well or they maybe say one of them gets injured, they're going to struggle to create the same amount of opportunity that they, that they do. It's not like they have the same strength and depth as say a, a Man City or a Liverpool attacking wise. Overall, I think they'll be happy with obviously with how things have started and the fact that like Kane's left and they still kind of pushed on. Obviously a fourth place finish will be really good, but I still think if one of them gets injured, then they will struggle to, uh, to obviously achieve that. Their tails are up. They're obviously really, really happy with the, how they've started. And yeah, if I was a Spurs fan, I'd be very optimistic because it seems like they have like a, like a resilience around the club now because Harry Kane's left. Everyone's expecting them to fall off. They've kind of built like a bit more unison. Whereas before they relied solely on Kane. Whereas you've seen like with Richard, where he struggled for a lot of time because he was playing second fiddle to Kane and he was never going to get ahead of him. And now he's getting a few more opportunities. Son is kind of stepping up now that he's the captain. Madison, who's obviously performed really well. So it's um, it's good things for Spurs fans and I'm sure they're happy with obviously how they started. Sunday then, Bournemouth against Chelsea. And this is worrying now for Chelsea. Like, you spend money on your club. You spend money on players. You bring in the, the players that you think are going to be the right fit. But sometimes it just doesn't click. I think Chelsea are struggling. Similar to the way Manchester United are. They're struggling for their identity. They don't know how they're going to play. How they're going to create chances. And you can see that the way they move the ball forward. They're kind of relying on individual brilliance. Similar to the way Manchester United are. But... 
the one thing i would say is that manchester united do have world-class players going forward in terms of like bruno um obviously if hoyland comes in does well rashford on his day is world class like he was last year chelsea just don't have that goal threat they just don't have the options going forward to score goals jackson he's come in he worked really hard his build-up play is good but when it comes to actually finishing a chance he's very poor he's very wasteful and you're relying on say people like sterling who left man city a few years ago and he's not going to be at his, his best um they played well against luton but i think that was a false optimism so i think for me chelsea are a team that people had high hope for because of the money that they spent but i don't think they're going to be performing anywhere near the level and it could probably honestly see them finishing the bottom half again the way they're going so it's worried for times for Chelsea Bournemouth on the other hand yeah I think Bournemouth are performing way above what people thought they were going to do I think after last season they surprised a lot of people they then sacked Gary O'Neill brought in their new manager and they're still performing really well like against Chelsea like going into the like say last 15-20 minutes they were on the attack and they had a few chances to score Solanke missed a really good opportunity where he nuts the defender and then uh, was blocked I think they'll be happy with that they'll be happy with a draw I think it was fair probably on the, the premise of the game Chelsea had a few chances to score as well like uh, Sterling hitting the crossbar but, but Bournemouth will be happy with how they're going and I think they'll be a, a threat to um, Premier League teams this year because they look like they're going forward Solanke is a really good option uh, as a striker and he's improved a huge amount so i think they'll be in, do enough to stay safe uh, and they will cause issue for teams chelsea fans how are you feeling after that result it's it's shocking and the start of the season that he's had it's it's really really tough and then bournemouth obviously are you just hoping that you're going to stay up this season finally then everton against arsenal yeah this game was interesting i would say i thought arsenal did really well really well um they need to dig out these types of results when they're playing against these teams everton would be happy with how they did up until like the 70th minute then Arsenal get the goal and then Everton didn't really look like they were going to score then it's just one of those results where Arsenal probably weren't at their best going forward but they still got the, the result and got it over the line Trossard coming in after Martinelli went off injured and scoring the goal Arsenal were obviously unlucky in the first half to having a goal disallowed um, it was offside uh, just ricocheted offside and Ketia was um, and Martinelli with a really good finish so he'd be disappointed and then he went off injured then so yeah I think Arsenal are going to be... They are going to be up there. They'll be up there again like they were last year. But they're still probably in my eyes not at that level of man city especially now they're going to be playing in the champions league where they're going to be playing every few weeks and um, that strength and depth that city have where they can just bring players in for me i think it's probably going to be liverpool and arsenal fighting for second place and, and that's just the way it is everything on the other hand yeah like if you're an everton fan and you're going to games like what do you have to, to celebrate about i'm a liverpool fan and i've seen everything have some really good teams but they've always been someone teams that have went at other clubs like they went after teams especially at Goodison Park but even when you, they play at Goodison Park now they're just kind of rolled over and they let teams have all the ball they don't really chase them down like they try and get the ball forward but there's no real like buzz about like what they're trying to do so it's worrying times for everything they've been obviously been in the relegation battle the last few years and I think they're probably going to be in and about that again if not they could get relegated because there's only so many times you can be in a relegation battle and get away with it so it'd be worrying if i was if i was an everton fan so there we have it another week of the premier league wrapped up and yeah it was a really good weekend of football lots of goals lots of talking points i think there's a lot of teams doing well a lot of teams not doing not so well but that's why we love the premier league we'll be back next week for another video so make sure to like and subscribe see you then